Since we released Forest Pack 7, we've had a few questions about how to place individual objects using custom edit mode, an option that used to be available from the Create menu in previous versions. In this tutorial, we'll quickly explain how to use custom edit mode in Forest Pack 7, and for no other reason except that it's Easter, we're going to use these three egg models to illustrate. So to start placing models from a scene individually, you should do the following. Select the objects in the scene that you want to place with Forest Pack. Go to the i2 software group in the Create panel and click to open the Forest Pack Create options. Click the Populate from Selection option. This will automatically add the selected objects to the Forest Pack items list and it saves you from having to do it manually later. Alternatively, you could always select objects from the library which will take priority. Change the mode to Icon and then click and drag somewhere in the scene to create a Forest Pack object. Then go to the Modify panel and open the Items Editor rollout. Change the mode to Custom Edit and click on the Tree button to enter the sub-object selection level. When this mode's active, you can add new items or move, rotate and scale existing ones. You should also note that you can convert any existing scatter to this mode for adding and editing individual items, but in this case we're creating from scratch. So to add a new item, click on the Add Items Add button and click in the scene. And really, it's as easy as that. Just click to add as many as you need. Now we could stop there, but while we're looking at this subject, let's go over some of the other settings in this rollout that perhaps are not so well known by our users. And I'm just going to switch to mesh display mode for this demo, although I wouldn't normally recommend it. So here you can see several creation options. By default, when you add a new object and there are multiple items in the list, the source will be randomly chosen. But you can also specify which models to create by simply selecting them from this drop-down list. There's also a third mode that allows you to create a sequence based on the order of the geometry in the items list, as you can see here. It's important to know, even though you're in manual editing mode, that you can still use the handy options of the transform rollout to randomize the scale, rotation and translation of sub-objects. On top of these randomized properties, any object can still be selected and edited using Max's native Translate, Rotation and Scale tools. You can see it as a kind of additive process. First the manual transforms are performed and then the randomized transforms are applied afterwards. For even more control, there are several more useful tools. For example, this items dropdown allows you to change the object for the existing selected sub-objects. The sub-item option allows you to pick the parts for group and the user ID allows you to assign an ID for post-production and other uses. Select by type allows you to quickly pick all the sub-objects that use the same source item as the current selection. Randomize will randomize the source items used for the selected sub-objects. Reset size will remove any manual scaling applied while in custom edit mode. Reseed will create new variations of any randomized transforms applied to the selected objects. And finally, store random bakes in the current random rotation, scale and translation and then disables these features from the transform rollout. So just because you're in custom edit mode, it doesn't mean you can't still use surfaces. This can be particularly useful when you need to add individual trees to a terrain and saves you the task of aligning them on the z-axis manually. In this example though, we're using eggs, so we'll just unhide some shelves. So to use these shelves as a surface, just add them to the surfaces rollout surfaces list in the usual way. And as you can see, that's it, nothing to it. Even here though, you have a few options. For a start, sometimes you might not actually want this behavior because it does mean you can no longer move these items on the z-axis. So if that's the case, it can be disabled by unchecking link to surface from the bottom of the surface rollout. So in this mode, the items are no longer linked to the surface and you can see they've dropped down to the ground. But there's still another option called place items that will quickly snap all the options to the surface, but it doesn't actually create a link to it. So you can still adjust their Z position should you need to. And finally, we'll just take a look at a couple of other options in the items editor rollout that allows you to split and combine forest objects. To use it, you make a selection of sub-objects and click Detach Selection to create a new forest object containing those chosen items. I'll just do this a couple more times to create a few forest objects to help me illustrate the Attach options. And these allow you to combine two or more forest objects together. Attach Single does pretty much what it sounds like, whereas Attach Multiple opens up a list of the forest objects in the scene, making it easier to combine several together in one operation. And that pretty much covers the most used features of the items editor rollout. 
I hope you find it useful. And on behalf of i2software, I wish you a happy Easter. Stay tuned for more tutorials coming soon.